Hello, my name is Ben Sayer. In this video, I'm going to guide you through getting Roots Magic 4 running on your Mac. For this installation, we're going to use Crossover for Mac, which is a relatively inexpensive piece of software that will allow you to run some Windows applications like Roots Magic without actually installing Windows on your machine. So that saves that additional cost. There are other alternatives like Parallels, Desktop, or VMware Fusion, uh, which are more expensive options, plus you have to own Windows. So for this demonstration, we're going to use Crossover for Mac. I've already downloaded that. So I've got these two things that we're going to need on our desktop here, the Crossover for Mac demo and the Roots Magic for Essentials setup. You'll find links for those pages to get those things on the show notes. The first thing that we'll do is open up the crossover DMG package. So this is a disk image. And once that's mounted, just like all things that we love on the Mac, the installation is really simple. It's just a matter of dragging crossover here and grabbing crossover and dragging it into the applications folder. Now that that's done installing, we can eject the crossover disk image. And then we'll just start up crossover. Since we're using the trial version, it gives us this little warning, which gives us the option of buying it, registering it, and trying it. So we're going to click Try Now. And then it asks us whether we want to allow logging of our usage in order to help code weavers, the people who put out Crossover, to improve the product. I'm just going to click Ask Me Later. You can choose whichever one you like. And now we're in Crossover, which you can see up here on the Finder menu. And we've got some options here to install Windows software. We can insert an install CD or use the Crossover software installer. And then you can also run programs that you've already installed. In this case, we haven't done that yet. So I'm going to click this Crossover software installer. and. That brings up this list of supported applications. And you won't find Roots Magic listed in there. So we'll need to select this one right here that reads Other Application. So this is software that's not supported by Code Weavers. And then we will choose our installer, which is on our desktop. So I've got that selected there, the RM4 setup. I'll click Use This Installer. And then the next thing that I will do is for the bottle that it's going to install in. The bottle is a container that, that your Windows application goes in, so you can keep each Windows application separate from each other if you'd like to. And right now this new WinXP bottle is selected, and it's got this name, new, Win, or new bottle name is Other Application. I'm just going to call this RM4 and then I'll click the Install button. There's a progress indicator here, and we can see here with this triangle that we can spin it down to get more details about what's going on. So right now it's creating the bottle that it will put the software in. So we'll just wait for that to be done. Okay, now we've got the Roots Magic Setup dialog box. So we can see this is a this looks like a Windows dialog box with a little bit of Apple controls on the top. And so we're going to click Next because this box tells us that it's going to set up Roots Magic 4. And of course we'll have to accept the license agreement and then tell it where we want to install it. Now this is installing into the bottle that was created. So it's got this Windows uh, path here, C colon backslash program files backslash roots magic. So we're going to accept the default here. And it's not going to mess up our Mac hard drive by putting a C colon or program files or anything like that uh, folder. We'll click next.
and next again. And I'm going to turn off this Create Desktop icon. And I'll leave on selected this Download Place Database for geocoding. Next. And then Install. Now we're actually running the Roots Magic installer, so it's putting all the files in place. The download of the geocoding data is almost complete. And now it's opening files and putting them in place. And there we go. We'll leave this Launch Roots Magic checked and click Finish. And we can see here we've got a Welcome to Roots Magic dialog box now. It's a Mac dialog box. It contains the Roots Magic information that would be in the dialog box on a Windows machine. And we're going to need to select which version of Roots Magic we're going to use here. You can use the free version of uh, Roots Magic Essentials. If you want to play around with Roots Magic and see if it's for you, this is a good option. For me, since I have a copy of Roots Magic, thanks to Bruce, I can uh, select this and enter my registration information. So I'm going to click this, uh, but you can click the Roots Magic Essentials if that's what you want to do, or you could go to uh, the Reach Magic site and buy yourself a copy. So I entered my key and uh, skipped that step in this video because I'm not going to share my key with you. And um, I've already registered. I'm just going to click the Register Later button and click Continue. Make sure you register and click OK. And there we go. We've got Roots Magic 4 running on a Mac through Crossover for Mac. And so here's the news and updates information that you'll get when you start up Roots Magic. And a uh, very cool thing is that the, there's a recent blog post on the Roots Magic blog about running Roots Magic on a Mac, which mentions the different ways that, that you can install. Roots Magic on your Mac. Um, and so this video will help you to actually get the thing installed. Um, this is the pane, the uh, dialog that you'll get that tells you about new versions. So, for instance, down here, this said Roots Magic 4 update released and then the update number. So, watch for those when you start up. If you see an update, you can download it here. So, I'm going to click close and I'm going to create a file. Create a new file and I'll call that Sayer Family. And then it's got a file locations here. I'm just going to accept the default. Again, this is within that bottle that we created with Crossover Mac. So you can see C users, Crossover My, My Documents, blah, blah, blah. And there's some settings on here that you'll want to consider whether you want LDS support, whether you want surnames to be displayed in uppercase, and whether you want new family search support. Things like that, numbers after names, date formats, and then you have the option of just beginning by entering in your information by hand or importing information from another program. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use an existing GEDCOM file. and I'll click OK. And then since I chose to import a file, it wants to know what kind of file I'm importing and there are a number of different versions. I'm going to select GEDCOM. I'm going to collect, click search for files and see if it finds the GEDCOMs on my Mac. And sure enough, it's going through all of the folders, not only in the bottle that was created by crossover from Mac, but also on my Mac volume. So there are a number of GEDCOMs on here. Obviously, I do uh, quite a bit of genealogy work with 
to various files so that um, I can test different software and things like that. So I'm just going to select this, say, your family jet and click the open file button. And then it wants to know whether I want to provide source information for where I got this JEDCOM. In this case, I don't. It's, it's my data. So I'm going to click OK. And so Roots Magic is importing my JEDCOM data. And there we go. I've got my family history loaded up into Roots Magic running on my Mac. One other thing that we're going to want to cover here is how to start up Roots Magic from now on. So let's close Roots Magic, file, exit, and we'll skip the backup. And let this crossover installer finish. And there we go. That's done. And so we can see here that we've got a folder that was created for a crossover, and it's if we go down here on the bottom, we can see it's in the system volume, under users, under my home directory, under my applications, and then a crossover folder, and there's Roots Magic 4 and Roots Magic. So that's where we've got this thing. So let's close this out by clicking Done. And then here's the hint that we need. It says to run the programs you've installed, use the finder to open the programs from the crossover application folder or use the programs menu. So I'm going to close this. And so if I just use Spotlight to find Roots Magic, you can see it finds Roots Magic 4 as the top hit here. And if you look at the, the um, help that came up there, it lists that location that we saw. And if I click that to run it, it automatically starts crossover for Mac and it gives me that dialog from crossover whether I want to try it or not. And I'm going to click Ask Me again on the Ask Me Later on the usage data. And there we go. It started up Roots Magic for me from Spotlight. So it's like anything else that I might want to run. And I'm right back in Roots Magic. Now you may also want to run it this way. I'm going to skip the backup again. And I'll close crossover again so you can see that you don't have to start it up by hand. You can start up crossover first if you choose, uh, but that creates a multiple step situation. So I'm going to open up my applications folder and you'll see that Roots Magic is not listed in this applications folder. And I want to explain to you why that is. That's because there are multiple application folders on your machine you may or may not be aware of. If I press Command and click Application on this name of this folder window, I can see where I am in my hard drive. So I'm on my MacBook Pro, I'm on the system volume, and the applications folder. So if you remember, Crossover installed that Roots Magic application into my own applications folder under my home directory. So if I click over to my home directory on places and then into applications, you'll find the crossover folder in there and then Roots Magic 4. And then here's the Roots Magic icon. So if you want to add that to your dock, you can just drag that over and put it where you want it to be on your dock and there you'll have Roots Magic 4. Or you can navigate into this folder or use the spotlight and if you want to use it from your this new shiny new icon that's on the dock, you can just click that. We'll go through the nag boxes that are there because I didn't answer them earlier. And there we go. We've got Roots Magic up and running on the Mac. Simple as can be, a few little things that this video I hope will help you get through. If you have questions or comments about using Roots Magic 4 on your Mac, feel free to leave them in the comments on the post on genealogytools.com.